Let's reset the simulation, go up one level, and just duplicate this here by just copying and pasting it. Gonna disable the box one and dive into box two. Let's just get rid of this sphere here. And in my bullet solver, let's set the initial object type back to create animated static objects. Another quite funny technique is to guide a simulation. That means being able to basically art direct a simulation. Let me show you what I mean by, again, using the really handy bend sop here. And I'll wire it in, in between this main geometry after the material fracture. Then let's just highlight it, set it up. So the formation here, the capture region happens along Y and not Z. And the capture length is four, as our whole box here is four units long. Also, I want to disable the bend, but instead enable the twist. So I can do now this here. And I want this to animate, but instead of keyframing, I'm just gonna drop down an expression. So $FF, that's our current frame number, times three. So if we hit play now, we can see this bend motion happening here and the whole pillar being deformed. Let's wire this into our guided sim input here. Highlight the bullet solver here. And on the bullet solver itself, let's go to guided simulation and enable use guides. So immediately when we hit play, we can see this happening. which already is quite funny. However, there are some issues here because these pieces here, they just don't seem to get loose. They seem to be stuck and be held by the guiding geometry that we piped in the last input slot here. So let's go reset this and dial this in a bit. There are two main things that I wanna do. First in my simulation settings, and those are the settings for the guiding geometry simulation here, I wanna dial in a few values. On the one hand, this here, blends in how strongly the guide geometry affects the behavior of those pieces versus the initial simulation. So if it's dialed to one, the guide geometry will have the full strength. I wanna lower this a bit and re-simulate. And that hasn't really gotten better yet. So the other thing I wanna dial in is the release of the constraints. That means my bullet solver created internal constraints which pin the simulated geometry to the guide geometry here. And by default, they are set to break after a certain threshold has instantaneously been reached. I wanna disable those and instead want to set an accumulated threshold value along the distance constraint here using the distance threshold here of 0.15. That means as soon as the pieces have an accumulated distance of this value past their original position, the constraints will start breaking. Let's re-simulate this. And that's already looking better. The only thing that's annoying me are those pieces up here that take a bit to be released. So let's see if we can fix those by resetting this and finally going to the setup tab in my guided simulation there and check use guided neighbors. Also, let's scroll down here to the guided neighbors section and check ensure neighbors. And what that should do is it should check for each piece if neighboring pieces have already fallen down and disconnected from our guided sim. And if that happens, the individual piece for which we're looking for its neighbors should also detach from the guide simulation. Let's hit play. And indeed, now we're seeing a behavior that I would expect from this. Not only can you pipe in deforming geometry in the guide sim input here, you could also use animated proxy geometry, for example, to guide your individual pieces by another simulation that you ran previously, or basically any geometry trickery you could come up with. Very, very funny tool, very useful tool as well for art directing your sims.